Now, let's not muck around, and we haven't talked about it for long enough, but it's time to put it at the front of the show, which is the Greens being the co-pilots of an each-way Albo government. They have said for some time that they want a power-sharing arrangement with Anthony Albanese. If it's a hung parliament, and I'll explain tonight why the numbers look that way, if Labor is going to get anywhere near government, it means they need the Greens. And if, for whatever bizarre chance they got a majority, they would still need them in the upper house. So, amazingly, while the Labor Party pretends there's no deal, there's no relationship, we're not the same peas in a pod, have a look at the preference deals, which the media doesn't want to tell you about, but I will now. This is the Senate How to Vote ticket in New South Wales for Labor. Labor 1, Greens 2. In Victoria, Labor 1, Greens 2. Two. In Queensland, Labor 1, Greens 2. A vote for Labor is a vote for the Greens. A vote for the Greens is a vote for Labor. And despite the fact that he has been a lifelong lefty, a socialist, a democratic socialist to his heart, he can tell newspapers as much as he want, wants that he's not woke. Well, a couple of weeks out from the election, who did Anthony Albanese choose to ride with today? He was marching in the streets in a protest in favour of the oh-so-important union movement, a union movement that has four-fifths of bugger all representation in the actual community, yet has 50% of the say in the way that the Labor Party picks its candidates and sets its policies. They also are the ones who do the intimidating when it comes to the polling booths, and they matter more than ever with people voting early, so this was the ring that he had to kiss. At a point in time when he's supposed to convince normal Australians, he chose to march in the streets like the old school radical. Oh, but he's wearing a baseball cap, so it's all completely okay. 